Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Family Paradox. When last we left off, we unfortunately lost the Siren Society, the prune that were once inhabiting Ross. But, on the plus side, we did manage to leave the planet very, very habitable to another society. So maybe another bit of life might spring up on that planet? Or... Maybe somebody else will come and colonize it. We will just have to find out. I think we're going to go start over here with the Vakai. Uh, I don't want their growth to be high. I think we'll take Dystopia down here. Militarized Lava Gates causes suffering and despair among the Vakai. We will find evidence of alien visitors hidden somewhere in our solar system? Signals from space to us? Kepler is receiving signals from another star. A fleet of ramshackle interplanetary spaceships is searching the outer borders of the Kepler system for valuable resources and picks up some unusual signals. Because of their great distance from their own star, they are able to receive the propaganda broadcast which traveled for many light years from Ross. If I have to hear one more ludicrous story about the bizarre encounters of some trash spacer captain in the outer cloud, I will feed them to my personal clone guard! <laughs> okay, well, we get enthusiasm, hostility. Okay, what's our options? Hostility. On the suspicion that the propaganda broadcast might contain sensitive information, a military faction from Kepler 4 wipes out the outer fleet, triggering an interplanetary crisis for control of the signal data. Again, not fun for them. I'd rather them go, yes, there's another being in the, in the universe, let's go kill them. But... That's kind of, honestly, the more, uh, more on the side of the enthusiasm, ironically. So after years of analyzing the transmission, the pilots of the run-down ships return to the inner planets, share their findings with the scientific community, and become heroes of the Vakai civilization. Let's go with that. It's very, very positive. Much, much positivity. Um, let's go ahead and improve the resources. They embark on a cleanup of the polluted sea region of Kepler 4. Are we living in a computer simulation? Uh, yeah, let's lower their harm potential. That would be ideal. Esh Oasis Colonies. Power in Gehana. Colonial tensions. The leaders of the colony fear potential dangers hidden in the Gahana system. Exploration vehicles are reinforced to defend the Ash from outside aggression, be it alien visitors or hostiles from their own Rigel system. Armed soldier, or sorry, armed colonial soldiers patrol the colonial bases to suppress any threats from within the colony. The end justifies the means, but what if there never is an end? All we have is means. Hmm. Again, there's no benefit to doing either of these options because we don't gain any synthesis from them. But, of course, the benefit is that we don't have to spend 50 synthesis to prevent it. So I guess let's go, go with regular development. The colonial bases are reinforced with colonial soldiers and the colony is guarded by exploration vehicles. The Esh in Gahana can now better defend themselves. Okay, we need to improve your growth, you guys. Because you guys are, like, in a hole here. Um, in a deep, deep hole. Deep, deep pain and feeling. The Esh mourn the death of a brilliant colonial scientist whose theories advanced the military colony. I guess let's improve their resources. Esh colonial plant planners establish new resource management methods. Isn't that nice? The influential leader rises to power in the Esh militarized colonies. Once powerful faction falls on Gehana 6. Um, take a little hit to their utopia there for some synthesis points. New tech age for the humans. They are now in the singularity age and yet have not sent off any ships. The humans create machines capable of recursive self-improvement. These constructs can build even more powerful copies of themselves autonomously, growing their potential with each generation. The path to true artificial intelligences is clear. Okay. 
Wisdom, advancement, power. Power doesn't do us any good. Um, I guess go for wisdom? That's 20 synthesis, though. Well, I guess we'll do power, because it really doesn't help us <laughs> in any way here. We get, only get two synthesis from it. Adaptive robotic soldiers upgrade themselves after every conflict, soon evolving into the most deadly fighting force ever created by the humans. Okay. I'm going to go back to the Esh Oases here. And I'm really hoping that we can improve their growth just a bit. Oh, I guess not. The Odo need us. Odo need us. We'll be right back. <laughs> the Odo have reached the nuclear age. Now I am become death. Oh, sorry. Now I am become death, destroyer of worlds. Look at my jacket. Um, let's see here. Power? I only get two synthesis from that. That doesn't help us at all. I don't want wisdom. I guess I don't want advancement, though, so I guess we'll do power. Because advancement's just going to make it worse as far as their growth goes. Heading further down the warpath, the Odo can expect to see assault rifles, jet fighters, and napalm. Not to mention the mother of all bombs. Yeah, that one. Yikes. Alright. Esh, give us population growth. Nope. Question mark. Esh cryo-colonists develop new diagrams for their buildings and tools. Oh boy, the demonia are in injustice. Agony accelerators. Antimatter specialists learn how to manipulate subatomic particle fields to create unimaginable pain. The device is too delicate to have military applications, but has potential to be used as the most horrific torture method in demoni history. I hurt myself today to see... That's not Nine Inch Nails. That's... That's Johnny Cash. Unless I did a cover of it. No, that's Johnny Cash. I hurt myself today to see if I still feel I focus on the pain the only thing that's real. I'm gonna look that up. It's definitely Johnny Cash. Alright, we can prevent it and gain 7 synthesis. I think we might as well do that. Prevention. The device only works on fully consensual participants, which makes it entirely useless for torture. That is good. We want that. Alright. Esh, you must survive. Give us p people. Give us population. Someday we'll receive a signal from our companions in the Rigel. No, you won't. They're dead. They're all gone. Can we build a thriving civilization here in the Guiana system? They've reached the Solar Age. Okay. Look at them in the, in the maroon. That's cool looking. Advancement. Ooh, I gained seven synthesis, but their growth will be super, super high. Hmm. I mean... Let's go for it. Techniques are developed to allow terraforming and colony construction in even the harshest environments in the Gilly system. Solar Age technology allows the Vulcans to harvest resources from asteroids and faraway planets in the Gilly system. Let's hit their growth a little bit here. Pull them down. Pull them down just a little bit. Let's go on back over to the Ash colonies and hopefully we can uh, make their civilization grow instead of shrink. We will see. Uh, the Ash in the Gehana system mourn the death of a beloved leader. I don't know why I'm going with this accent all of a sudden. <laughs> Vakai are just leaps and bounds. Now they're in the light speed age. Racing into the light speed age. Racing into the light speed age. Interstellar journeys are shortened from centuries to mere decades. Vakai civilization sets new speed records in areas such as quantum state computing, light jet manufacturing, and mining for resources on faraway planets. Okay, we could do it for advancement. Wisdom costs us. Power is always fun, but doesn't get us. It just hurts us. Doesn't get us much. So let's go for advancement. The Vakai achieved true mastery of space travel, and colonial development crosses major hurdles. The civilization also makes leaps in genetic modification and cloning, perhaps even creating new life forms such as trash-eating plants. Cool. Um, oh, Gillisarian governments. 
they're gonna die. An apocalypse cult on Dogstar has obtained a potent virus strain from a biological research facility. Their plan to spread a deadly pandemic over the entire world could expunge Galassarian civilization. Wow. It's extraordinarily hard succumbing bone by bone, bone and bowel, heart and hand. This disease uh, pervades us all. It can therefore manifest anywhere in anyone at any moment. Eesh. So, complete extinction. Not an option. Uh, close call would cost us 50. It's a lot. Minimal survivors. Let's see here. Oh, we would lose v almost everybody. But their potential casualties would, would be better, and they'd lose some tech. That's fine. We'll go for minimal survivors. The virus is released simultaneously upon all the population hotspots of Dogstar. Only the isolated compounds of the cult are spared from the ravaging illness. Great! So the cult that wants the apocalypse to happen is the only one that gets to survive. This is awful. Okay, and now it's home of the Gilisarian cults. <laughs> Crazy. Um, okay, alright. Most Gilisarians are killed by an engineered plague spread all over Dogstar. The ancestors of the Doomsday Cult rule over the depopulated planet now. Crazy. Absolutely bonkers. Colonial chauvinism causes strife. Chauvinism? I think that's how that's pronounced. Causes strife among the Gilisarian cultists. Now the Odo are getting signals. The competing factions of Tau Ceti III set up sophisticated espionage at networks and monitor each other's radio communications closely. One day they pick up something very different, the propaganda broadcast from the Vulcan civilization. I would say that since the war, our methods have become much the same. I mean, you can't be less ruthless in the opposition simply because your government's policy is benevolent now, can you? So, do they react with enthusiasm or hostility? So in, in this case, hostility, a covert operation to obtain the propaganda broadcast triggers an espionage war over research related to the Vulcan civilizations. Heavy militarization follows. Yeah. So, I mean, on the one side, we do get 20 synthesis from that. That's really good. On the other side, op opposing espionage organizations pick up the propaganda broadcast and race to decode the message from the Vulcan civilization. I think we're going to go hostility, honestly. Let's go with hostility. Let's see where that takes them. How's the sleeper fleet doing? Slowly but steadily went in the race. Okay. Ash, give us population. No, that's the opposite direction. We need you to have a plus sign in that one. Um, let's see here. Question mark? Nope. Sometimes the question mark helps. Sometimes it doesn't do jack anything. All right, there we go. A little bit more growth. Populous Esh fortified base becomes a colonial administration hub. Improve their resources. The cryo colonists of Gahana system create microchips to con uh, in tribute of their new home. Okay, cool. I just really want. Oh, how's the sleeper fleet doing? An armed conflict threatens the Esh. It's never a good thing, right? Dividing up Vexus, a tyrannical officer in charge of a sleeper barge has claimed potential territories on Vexus for their sleeper crew. This is hilarious because it's already owned by a whole bunch of people. <laughs> um, this may lead to civil war among the Ash sleeper fleet. Power is my mistress. Oh, wait. Wait. Is this Napoleon? Power is my mistress. I've worked too hard at her conquest to allow anyone to take her away from me. Now, that's probably his dad. Oh, wait, no. What am I talking about? <laughs> I read that I was like immediately it's Napoleon Dynamite and I read Napoleon Bonaparte's quote it's like, power is my mistress god I worked too hard at her conquest to allow anyone to take her away from me you freaking idiot <laughs> oh gosh when, you know you're tired when alright we can spend 20 to get peace that'd be good total war would have a lot of casualties. Hmm, 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 hmm. 
let's let's do something nice for them let's have peace mostly because i just want to see what happens if we uh have a rematch between the two societies when they get to the demonic sage hegemonies they're probably just going to destroy our most advanced civilization <laughs> that probably will be our luck um i guess we'll go for tech age because if we can get to the next tech age we can get growth up um, ethical values, might as well put that up. The cryo colonists develop new diagrams for their buildings and tools. Hey, a little bit more growth. Alright, we're at zero now. Tech age, we're very, very close. Work of a remarkable colonial scientist is widely circulated among the cryo colonists. The Esh cryo colonists build an astonishing monument in Gehana 6. Now they are in the cyber age. The S use new technology to further adapt their blah blah blah. <laughs> ah, look at them. Now they're out of their spacesuits again. Alright, advancement. It's gonna t cost us 10? I mean, I guess it's for the best, right? Cybernetically enhanced engineers plan a rapid expansion of infrastructure on Gahana 6 and beyond. They named this expanded civilization after the first colonists to show appreciation for their ingenuity. Okay, alright. Alright, alright. So growth is good now. I'm gonna leave you guys be. Let's see how the Odo are doing. Growth is really high, resource scarcity. I think we could do a little bit to cold their civilization here. Uh, nuclear age technology allows the Odo to extract radioactive materials and fossil fuels from the oceans of Tau City 3. A battle over an important Nodo residential area is won by an army of mo motorized infantry. Soul is building spaceships, finally! I taunted you guys and now you're doing it. Shipcraft. Most manual labor in the soul system is done by androids, supervised remotely by humans. To make these tasks more engaging and fulfilling, administrative, administrative artificial intelligences structure the work into playful challenges. The gamified workers start broadcasting their elaborate construction projects to a captified, captivated audience with the cooperation of a self-replicating extractor and multiple microform clusters they try to accomplish the unprecedented quest of constructing the starship live together with their audience it's just sad it's like you can't just do a job you've got to be it's got to be fun like come on guys i could watch 8 or i could watch 872d philosophizing philosophizing oh my gosh philosophizing philosophizing there's the word philosophizing about impulse drive calibration all day uh, epic project yeah we want this to go an entire generation of humans logs into the mercur mercurial computer networks to participate in gamified starship construction projects intelligence assisted streamers compete for the most elegant starship design after a gravitational reactor powered swarm is constructed the community votes to send them to the rigel system well isn't that nice but that means yeah because they're yeah it's been destroyed yeah the, the whole the whole planet's like dead now this will be fun all right human craft swarm what a big bulky ship that is that's huge. All right, let's up the resources. Mercurial computers simulate efficiency protocols for the human craft swarm crew. We don't want to improve their growth. I think the, keeping a zero growth is pretty good for a spaceship. But I do want to improve their resources if we can. A new, new generation of human craft swarm officers takes over system maintenance. Oh, now the sleeper fleet's getting signals from space. Well, that's interesting. The chatty sleeper fleet. During the long and boring journey, barges within the Esh sleeper fleet have begun sending countless broadcasts and messages to each other. When the interplanetary traffic signal that was sent out from the Sol system arrives, oh, this is from the humans, will it get lost in the noise of so much chatter? Early internet, internet communication code significance unknown ASL. Huh. American Sign Language? Um, 
I think we should go for enthusiasm, right? Let's see. If we do hostility, distorted snippets of the interplanetary traffic signal interrupt the broadcast of the fleet sleeper clue, sending, lending a sinister tone to the signal, a fleet-wide panic erupts. Nah, let's go for enthusiasm. We're going to have to really uh, sell somebody's souls here to get enough synthesis back. Social scientists monitoring the airwaves soon notice the interplanetary traffic signal. They announce their discovery publicly, giving everyone something to really talk about. Cool, cool. All right. All right, let's go. Who's, who can we suck some souls from here? Maybe these guys? They're doing okay. Lightspeed age technology, military defense installation, it exterminates the entire space marine army, the mighty, mighty Vakai Commonwealth. The drive for progress in lightspeed age led the Vakai through underground cities, magnetic field manipulation. Hey, they're reaching enlightenment in space, that's nice. Ship unity, assembling scores of humans into one harmonic planned society where everyone works together, has had remarkable effects on the ethics of the ship dwellers. A shared fear of the unforgiving void on all sides of the ship's hull unites them and impedes political infighting. Oh, how nice. There's no use in traveling to the moon and Mars if the distance between mind and mind remain ever growing. That's actually very poignant. Shit. Shit, that's deep. Uh, we don't have enough for the main objective, but we could do the regular objective, or we can gain 10 synthesis uh, for a dead end. Maybe we do the dead end. While simulation design romanticize, while simulation designers romanticize the tranquility of their society, ultimately a feeling of cynicism creeps in, and the crew eventually abandons attempts at unity. Yeah, let's do that one. Get, some, get us some 10 synthesis. Alright, how are the Odo doing? Maybe we'll pawn off them for a little bit an influential odo ruler rises if alien beings exist they would have visited tau city long ago or at least have given us some indication of their existence hmm growth went up cool i want growth to go down actually that would be the greatest thing if i can get some negative growth ones i can get some extra synthesis from it um, oh, I could have done the tech level. Dang it, I should have done that. Because they could take a hit to their tech. An influential Odo ruler rises to power on Tau Seti 3. Um, yeah, increase their tech. Let's see here. How are the Demani Sage Hegemonies? They're eating up a lot of resources. Hyperspace Freeport. Hyperspace isn't under the domain of any sage hegemony, and therefore is not subject to trading laws. To circumvent regulations and tariffs in, on interplanetary trade, an enterprising Demani subspace merchant starts to exchange off-star assets and antimatter during hyperjumps. Ooh. If we can prevent it, we're going to have massive consumption. For five, though, uh, consumption's not worth it to me. Might as well prevent it. Hyperspace travel takes an immense amount of energy to combat waste that Demani Sage Hegemonies crash down hard on hyperspace corruption and closes legal loopholes. Okay. Fair enough. They can now build space habitats in deep space connected to their home system by jump gates. Superluminal age technology enables the Demanes to harvest anomaly anomalies and antimatter adjacent to the Vex system. Um, let's go here. Uh, I don't want to grow. I want to shrink. Nope, I just shrink, shrink their resources. The Demani Sage Hegemonies expand another restricted ocean region to protect the aquatic sea life on Vexes. Isn't that nice? The Vakai are in a new tech age. They're in the Singularity Age. The Vakai create machines capable of recursive self-improvement. These constructs can build even more powerful copies of themselves autonomously. Hmm. Power? Seems pretty... That seems pretty on point for them. Might as well. Adaptive robotic soldiers upgrade themselves after every conflict soon evolving into the most deadly fighting force ever created by the Vakai. Ah, indeed, indeed. They can now build large orbital habitats monitored and maintained by artificial super-intelligences. Oh, 
So now we have two ships that are going to literally pass each other as they're headed. Uh, this one seemed uh, like in a completely metaphorical way, getting revenge uh, for their fallen comrades on Rigel. These humans are going to have a tough time settling on Rigel. We'll see what happens there. And all things considered, all things considered, we're doing okay. If you want to see what happens next on this series, folks, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos like this video so it shows up in the YouTube algorithms. And as always, folks, I will see you in the next game.